Happy Sabbath, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to this powerful program where we are worshiping the Lord is Show Me God Ministry on this platform. I hope you had a beautiful week. And uh, I know some of our friends overseas, you are not yet into the Sabbath hours. We have just entered into the Sabbath hours here in the Southern Hemisphere. God bless you so much as you prepare for the Sabbath uh, up there. Uh, Today we are going to be blessed with a powerful message, but I'm going to begin with an important announcement. Uh, There will be no evening broadcast tomorrow. Our final presentation is going to be at 10 o'clock a.m. Central African time. We are going to be finalizing with a very powerful message to conclude the whole series. I pray that you may note the times. Unless if you are not able to attend the morning, perhaps you can watch the delayed program. It will be posted on you on YouTube as well as it will be on this platform. May the Lord bless you so much. And um, my name Irvin Nyatanga, for those who are on the platform for the first time tonight, God bless you so much. I, on behalf of the Show Me God Ministry team, we extend warm greetings to you, and we believe your life will never be the same again. We are going to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide us as we explore the Word of God tonight. Shall we bow our heads, please? Our Father, who art in the kingdom of heaven, we thank you, Lord, for ushering us here in the southern hemisphere into the Sabbath hours. We want to pray for our friends also who are preparing to enter into the Sabbath hours. Bless all of us. Right now, Lord, we desire your guidance, your leadership, as we open the Holy Writ. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to say, show me God has got many friends like you in different parts of the earth. We have friends in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, all over Africa, even in Asia. People are following this channel and uh, we are having a good time. We're encouraging one another as we see the day of the Lord approaching. So I want to encourage those who have not yet subscribed to the show me God channel for powerful present truth messages, please just hit the red button and you will be notified of any fresh uploads. Those who are here for the first time, perhaps you missed the other presentations we covered this week and even more presentations that are on that platform, feel free to visit and click uh, the relevant topics you want to listen to. Now, our theme that we are using in this present, in this week of prayer is entitled, Now is the Time. That's the theme that has been guiding us uh, up to this day, even as we conclude. Now, under this theme, I have the topic for tonight entitled, The Identity Marks of a Spirit-Filled Person. Identity marks of a spirit-filled person. Now is the time, my brothers and sisters, to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As we see the signs of the times abounding all around us as we have been covering In the scientific world, there are signs there. We talked about it. In the social world, there are signs. In the family circles, there are terrible signs. Divorce, brother betraying brother, father against son, and things like that. In the natural world, natural disasters are all pointing to the second coming of Jesus. Today, we are going to look uh, at a number of signs Uh, that are indicators that the Lord is coming soon, another category of signs in the religious world. 
So all these signs are pointing to one event. The great day of the Lord is coming soon. The best way we can prepare for it is to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So how can we identify a spirit-filled woman, a spirit-filled man? How can we know a spirit-filled pastor, a spirit-filled elder? Tonight, the questions will be answered. Let's go to the religious signs first. What are the signs that are taking place or that have been predicted by the Lord through his word to help us know that we are in the last days? In the book of Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. Revelation 16, verse 13, friends. Uh, I'm going to read. As John beheld from the island of Patmos the visions of the time of the end, he says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For there are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. If I read on, it says, it is the great day of the battle of Armageddon, the great day of God Almighty. Signs in the religious world. Number one, John was shown from the island of Patmos in AD 95 that just before Jesus comes, Satan and his demons are going to be visible publicly to planet Earth. Are you ready for that terrible sign that the Lord predicted through John? Satan and his demons are coming into visibility. John says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. You see, there are three representing an evil trinity. We know of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Spirit. We are going to see an evil trinity, demons coming into visibility into this world. I get excited when I hear people start talking about we are seeing unidentified flying objects. And I hear some military personnel around the world are now taking interest into studying the phenomena of UFOs. I know that there are masquerading demons that are preparing now to come into Earth's orbit and to be visible to man according to the word of God. So men cannot identify them, but I know the Bible is identifying them as spirits of demons. And the Bible says they are going to be using, uh, it says, verse 14, for they are spirits of devils working miracles. Demons love miracles, deceptive miracles. You see, before Jesus comes, we are told, there will be much emphasis of miracles in the religious world. Signs of the times in the religious world. I want to say to you, friends, miracles are not a test of faith. Miracles are not a sign that one is possessed by the Spirit of God. So the devil is going to be using also false prophets. In the work of deception, emphasis on miracles, faking the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, for there are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty, the battle of Armageddon. So John was shown that the devils are coming to be visible to the world. The unidentified flying objects will soon be identified. And I fear one of the days they are going to in intercept some of the space shuttles that are sent there by scientists. And I believe one of these days they are going to be receiving signals. 
purportedly from aliens. These are demons, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says they are demons and they are going to be touring the world visiting the kings of the earth. That's what the Bible says here. To gather them to battle against God. I believe that's when even the Sunday law will be legislated to force everybody to worship the mark of the beast because of the influence of evil spirits touring the world, gathering the whole world against God and his commandments. Are you ready for this time, friend? Everything else is fulfilling Natural world, there are signs there, the social world, scientific world. Now the Bible speaks and says, watch the religious circles. If you see more emphasis on miracles than on the word of God, the Bible. If you see more emphasis on miracles than on the commandments of God, watch out. The demons are about to be visible and the miracles will be worked out to deceive. I remember back then in Egypt, God sent Moses to work out miracles to prove that God had sent him. And the Pharaoh who was opposing God asked magicians and these astrologers, they also cast their rods and they became uh, serpents. But the serpent of Moses swallowed the serpents of Pharaoh's magicians. Do you, does it mean that Pharaoh had the Holy Spirit? Does it mean that the magicians of Pharaoh had the Holy Spirit? Or it was some kind of hocus pocus activities that were taking place there. We are told that contest is coming back again. So the question is, do you know how to identify a man, a pastor, a prophet, an elder who has the genuine Holy Spirit? If you are not grounded in God's word, you shall call the fake demonic spirits to be Holy Spirit and you'll be possessed by dangerous spirits. The Bible says, believe not every spirit. We are in those very days, my friends. So Satan is going to be faking the Holy Spirit. But the type of spirit is going to be breathing on the lost people are frog-like spirits which love miracles, jumping and dancing and shouting in religious circles. We want to find out if Jesus did these things and his disciples because they were filled by the Holy Spirit. Can you identify the genuine spirit and distinguish it from the fake? Satan in the religious circles is faking the Holy Spirit power. People who are speaking under the influence of frog-like spirits are called powerful preachers, powerful pastors, but the content of the message is unbiblical. Friends, be careful. We are living in those very last days. We need to watch out. Uh, so Satan will be faking the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost by pouring Three unclean spirits to possess all the lost. All those who have not received Jesus as their personal savior in these very last days will be swept into the ranks of Satan by seducing spirits in demonic activities, faking to be the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, he that readeth, let him understand. Jesus spoke these things to warn us. Satan will fake tongues, the tongues that were spoken by the apostles on the day of Pentecost until 3,000 people were baptized. We are told those tongues were languages which people could hear from different parts of the world, but the devil would come with fake tongues, gibberish that cannot be heard or understood, and people think that's the Holy Spirit. Are these not the days that some of these things have begun to happen? Satan is going to deceive the whole world by faking a great awakening, a great religious awakening, and a great uh, revival, deceiving the whole world to prevent people from preparing for, uh, for the day of the Lord. God's people who follow Christ and love Jesus are not deceived by frog-like spirits. 
jumping spirits, miraculous spirits, because miracles are not a standard of righteousness. Even demons perform miracles and magicians perform miracles. So we need more than miracles. We need the word of God. Satan will cause or is causing ecstasy in the religious cycle, in the religious circles, excitement, emotionalism, and people think that's the Holy Spirit. Can you identify a person or a man or a woman with the Holy Spirit? Can you distinguish fake spirits from holy ones, from the Holy Spirit? Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 24, as he looked through the corridors of time, through the spirit of prophecy, he uttered these powerful words that I'm going to read here, Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For they shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, if they shall say to you, behold, he is in the desert, don't go there. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, don't go there. So Christ has warned us again about signs and indicators of his soon coming, uh, signs in the religious arena. Everybody is expecting for a Messiah to come in the Middle East. But Jesus is not coming in the Middle East. Who is going to come in the Middle East? Watch out. Satan is just about to come into the world, posing as the Christ. Demons are accompanying him, posing as the prophets of old, posing as Elijah, posing as Moses, posing as Isaiah and Jeremiah and the Apostle Paul and Elijah. And the, devil, the Bible says they shall be faking Christ and the prophets. And the people shall be deceived. We have not known the Lord. And it will be said, he is in the desert. Go and see him. He is in the inner chambers. Jesus says, do not even go there. No matter what kind of miracles he performs in those secret chambers, even if he heals the sick, because he is the master of disease, he can reverse the conditions of the sick. Don't go there, for our faith is not based on miracles. It is based on the word of God. Thus saith the Lord. So, friends, the Bible says these are the signs in the religious circles. So Jesus says, what admonition does he give us? We who are living in these last days, when there's too much emotionalism, ecstasy, miracle, emphasis in the religious circles, false prophets are, are now being called men of God. False pastors are now called men of God. Sodomizing priests are called holy people of God. Nowadays, because the world doesn't know how to distinguish between the holy and the unholy. You are blessed tonight. You shall know the distinction. Luke 21, verse 28, Jesus said, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. When these things, even in the religious circles, begin to come to pass, when there's more emphasis of miracles, ecstasy, emotionalism, kicking the Bible away in preference for miracles, watch out, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. This is time to look up to Jesus. This is time to look up to God. This is time to look up to the word of God for guidance. For we are in the last days, according to Bible prophecy. I will read again Luke 21, verse 31. So likewise, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is at hand. Know that now Jesus is even at the doors. Now is the time to be serious in worshiping God, in serving God, in repentance, for the kingdom of God is at hand, judging by the signs of the times all around us, including the religious world. 
Now, here we're beginning our checklist. We're now beginning our checklist to identify a spirit-filled person so that when we see fake spirits, we may be able to know that this is devilish. This is not from God. No matter how impressive or miraculous it may be, our duty is to study the word. Jesus said the other day, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There is freedom in knowing the word of God. You will not be deceived, for men will be swept into hellfire by the deceiving demons, for they don't want to die alone. They want to die with you. Let's study together the book of uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 16, beginning with Jesus. We are looking for signs of the genuine spirit in a man or a woman. Luke 4, 16 says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom or habit was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Identifying marks. Jesus, the man Jesus, was filled by the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said. Not the frog-like spirit, but the dove-like spirit, which came upon him as he was baptized by John the Baptist. So, when the Spirit was upon him, the Spirit filled Christ had a habit and a custom that he entered into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Number one, the Spirit filled Christ. He had a custom of Sabbath keeping. Today, there are people who claim to have the Holy Spirit and they hate the Sabbath. If you don't read the Bible, you won't distinguish it. You may call everybody else holy. He, the Son of God, was filled by the Spirit and he had this custom and this habit of going into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. The question I may want to ask you, sister or my brother, do you have the Holy Spirit? If yes, what is your custom? If you have the Holy Spirit that was upon Jesus, then your custom is to keep the Sabbath day holy. Thank God. John, in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, A.D. 95, years after Jesus had ascended into the heavens, John the Apostle, one of the twelve disciples, wrote, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Then I heard a voice uh, saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the uh, first and the last. That's when he saw the visions of the book of Revelation. And he says, I was in the Spirit. Just as his Lord was in the Spirit, who entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. So he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. The great question is today, the global village doesn't know which is the Lord's day. It has been told that Sunday is the Lord's day. But it's unbiblical. There's no scripture backing it up. We need the Bible tell, to tell us when John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, which, which Lord did which day? The book of Mark chapter 22, verse 28 says, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So John was in the spirit on the Sabbath day in A.D. 95, when his Lord had ascended into the heavens, A.D. 31, he kept the habit and the custom of his spirit-filled Lord and observed the Sabbath on the island of Patmos, where he had been exiled. I want you to notice something. As we are looking at the identity marks of a spirit-filled person, John had this custom and habit which was the custom and habit which he learned from his Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, 
the custom of keeping the Sabbath. The devil has a plan, friends, in these last days to deceive people away from obedience to the Lord, away from the Sabbath by putting another day, the international Sunday law is going to be passed very soon to compel small and great to keep a new Sabbath instead of the Sabbath of God. And people will be told they have the Holy Spirit. And now we know it is frog-like spirits that counter the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God and the Holy Sabbath of God are inseparable. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Sabbath are inseparable. If you are spirit-filled, like Jesus, like John, definitely your habit and your custom will be to keep the seventh day Sabbath holy, for it is the Lord's day. Some people say, but the Sabbath was nailed on the cross in A.D. 31. The interesting thing is when John was stood there, A.D. 31, when the Lord, Lord was being crucified, he was keeping the Sabbath in A.D. 95, long way after the Master had been crucified and resurrected. Where is the argument that, that says the Sabbath was nailed to the cross? Where is it coming from? This is extra biblical teaching, which should not be binding, for the Bible teaches that the law of God is eternal. So Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he said, the Lord has anointed me to preach to the poor, uh, to heal the brokenhearted, to open the eyes of the blind. So the spirit-filled man, on top of keeping the Sabbath, the spirit-filled person has a passion to minister to the poor. Do you have the Holy Spirit, friends? Do you have a passion? A ministry to the poor? A ministry to the brokenhearted, to the sorrowing of the earth? Do you care about the sorrowing neighbors? If you have the Spirit of God, yes, you care, because Jesus cared, he was filled by the Spirit. Today, there are those who exploit the poor, the false prophet will even rape women after praying for them, impregnate some, and fleece people out of their money to enrich himself. Is that the spirit of God? Did Jesus do these things? We have sodomizing priests. We have holy titles, but are sodomizing boys and girls. Is this the spirit of God? The world no longer knows how to distinguish between the holy and the unholy. You can only do this when you come to study the word of God. Now is the time to know, to distinguish between the genuine spirit and the fake spirit. Now is the time not to be deceived by holy titles. You shall know them by their fruits. The fruit of frog-like spirits cannot be hidden. They are manifest in rape, raping uh, boys, sodomizing them taking advantage of the poor and uh, greediness. Jesus did not manifest this spirit. Let's take it from him. You see, Jesus was filled by the Holy Spirit when he ministered. I remember the other day he was standing by the well in Samaria, and a prostitute came to, uh, to draw water, and Jesus and the prostitute alone were there at the well. Because he was spirit-filled, Jesus did not think of adultery. He started to talk about the word of God until the prostitute went and told the whole city. And they came to Jesus and the city was converted. Today we have people who have holy titles, who don't have the Holy Spirit, who if left alone with a lady or a prostitute who needs prayer, they end up raping, abusing sexually abusing them. Oh, how many stories are we hearing in the religious circles? Spiritless ministers, spiritless elders with sexual scandals, men of the cloth. Let's study the word of God together. Jesus, the, uh, the, 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 the savior of the world, was filled by the spirit. 
and he related well with the opposite sex. The other day, a prostitute was brought to Jesus in the wilderness, and they said, we caught her on the very act. She must be stoned, and Jesus wrote on the ground the name of every man who was complaining against the woman, and the date and the day in which that man had slept with this prostitute, says when everybody read their name on the sand and the date, they feared Jesus would publicize, and they left one by one. And Jesus was left with that prostitute in the desert. What would you do, friend, when you are left alone with a prostitute? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will fall into temptation. Jesus said to the woman, because you are spirit-filled, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Today you have men who are filling up uh, the religious circles, who cannot be trusted with a secretary in the office. Not in the wilderness, in the office. So many scandals because of lack of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what position you hold in church. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will fall into every sin because frog-like spirits are upon you. Unclean spirits lead to unclean behavior, leads to uncleanness morally. Identity marks of a spirit-filled man or woman. Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. The Bible says, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So Jesus in bidding farewell to his disciples, passing on the button stick of the Christian re relay race, he promised his disciples then and to the end of time that his true and genuine disciples will receive the Holy Spirit power, the genuine spirit, not the frog-like spirits of deception and miraculous uh, activities. He says when the spirit comes, you have power. So spirit-filled men and spirit-filled women are men and women of divine power. And divine power tri triumphs against the sinful nature. They are not people of scandals. They are people of moral uprightness and integrity. He says, now when that power comes, you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall represent me. You shall declare the gospel of Jesus the way I showed it to you, from Ju Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the earth. So today many people are rushing into the gospel arena without the Holy Spirit. And they are into corruption and immorality and uncleanness in the name of the Lord. Because a wrong spirit is upon them. The master said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. My ministry is to go to the poor, the maimed, the blind. He was moved by the spirit in the power of the spirit. So Jesus wants that uh, culture to continue in your life and in my life even today. The question is, do you have the Holy Spirit? The disciples had to pray and the fast 10 days in the upper room to be endued with the spirit of the master. So the Holy Spirit does not come on the prayerless. Now is the time to ask for the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to fast for the power that the Lord promised us to be, that we may be endued with divine power to withstand the tide of evil and sin that is growing in the world. The tide of immorality, the, the tide of promiscuity, the tide of all sorts of evil can be withstood only by the power of the Spirit. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he took a book, the book of Isaiah, and opened where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So every Spirit-filled person, man or woman, is like Jesus he takes the word of God and opens it and studies, studies, studies it daily. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus took the scriptures, read from the scriptures when he, he was in the spirit and in the synagogue. 
Today, there are those who claim to have the Holy Spirit but never study the Bible. They can host, run a religious service on jokes from the pulpit, putting the congregation to laughter, clowning before the people, not opening the word. Or if they do at all, they misquote scripture. But the Bible is being put into the dustbin. When Jesus stood in the synagogue, he opened scripture. Friend, do you study the Bible? Spirit-filled women study the Bible. In these last days, the devil doesn't want people to study the Bible. For he knows it is the book that will judge him. It is the book that reveals Christ as the Messiah. It is the book that unmasks all his deceptions. That is why some people feel sleepy when they open the Bible. But when they watch a soccer match on television, they don't sleep. Even if a soccer match goes into extra time, they are wide awake, open a scripture, they start dozing. The devil doesn't want people to study the Bible. So the disciples, after Jesus, were also filled by the Spirit. Not of miracles and a, a emphasis on other things. They were preaching the gospel, the good news from the word of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 33 says, And with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all with great power. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So the power of the Holy Ghost came upon them and they delivered the messages of the gospel with great power. Today, there are many powerless messages that are being preached by people with frog-like spirits. Some gospel messages are now more like fundraising. And the emphasis is on cash, money, profits, no power. Sinners won't repent. When the apostles preached with great power, like their master in the power of the spirit, 3,000 people were baptized in one day. The power of the spirit must accompany the preaching of the gospel. But if a priest sodomize, where is the power of the Holy Spirit? When prophets start raping women, where is the power of the Holy Spirit? It's a sinful spirit. And people cannot distinguish between the Holy Spirit and the evil spirit. Today, fake prophets and fake pastors are joking and caricaturing the word of God cartooning the gospel. And people now have a low esteem on the power of the gospel because there are no, there are very few spirit-filled servants of God. Now is the time to claim the power of the spirit that the master promised. For if you don't receive the genuine spirit, the devil is pouring frog like spirits to gather the whole world for the battle of Armageddon against God. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now is the time to pray for the Holy Spirit. We want to keep checking the identity marks of a spirit-filled person. They have power of the Spirit, even in the deliverance of the gospel. And they study the word of God. And they keep the Sabbath like Jesus, like John and many apostles. So any spirit that rejects the Sabbath, the Bible, is not the spirit of God. It's not the spirit of Jesus. Watch out. Jesus says, I have told you before, signs in the religious world. Acts chapter 4 verse 36 says, And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the feet of the apostles. When the Holy Spirit fell at Pentecost, many people who believed received the Holy Spirit power. And one of the brothers who received the Holy Spirit was called Joseph. And when he received the Holy Spirit, he was moved by the Spirit with a passion for the mission of the gospel. That he went and sold his property and brought all the money at the feet of the apostles. 
So the Bible says none of them lacked anything. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon a man or a woman, he generates the spirit of generosity, the spirit of supporting gospel mission to the glory of the Lord. Friends, today, there are people who claim to have the Holy Spirit who are so stingy, who will not release a penny to support, to support the gospel mission of Jesus. And they are waiting for the second coming of Christ. Do you have the Holy Spirit, friend? Compare this man, Joseph, was even nicknamed by the apostles as Barnabas, which means son of comfort, son of consolation. He was a comforter to evangelists, a comforter to the gospel commission because he supported the work being spirit filled. Friend, do you have the Holy Spirit? Or you are faking possession by the Spirit? Let's study. In these last days, people do not know how to distinguish the Spirit of God from unclean spirits. People with unclean spirits are called men of God. Women with unclean spirits are called holy women. But people can't tell the identity marks of the genuine Spirit, the Spirit of generosity. For missions, some are generous in the wrong direction. There are those who are generous to prostitutes. They can buy them cars and rent them some flats. That's not good generosity. It is not coming from the Holy Spirit. It's coming from the unclean spirits, the frog-like spirits, which support uncleanness. So, friend, get to know the distinction and ask yourself if you have the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, how do we know? Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon a man or a woman, he has a work to do, which is called the work of the sealing. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now, to seal means to put something inside and close it in securely. What does the Holy Spirit put in every man and woman upon whom he dwells? The devil doesn't put that. The answer comes from Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes into your life, he will seal divine love in your heart. And love to God becomes supreme in love to your neighbor. So you love God and love your neighbor as yourself. There are some people who claim to be men of God with the Spirit of God who hate their neighbors, hate their fellow church members, they are not men of love, but men of hatred, men of grudges. That is the fruit of three unclean spirits like frogs. The Holy Spirit will, will seal peace in the heart. You become known as a man of peace, a woman of peace, a peacemaker, not a troublemaker in the family or in the church because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. There are people who are called men of God who are troublemakers. They are not men of peace. The Holy Spirit will seal long-suffering or patience in the heart of the children of God. You are sealed by the Spirit. Patience. There are so many impatient men and women in the religious circles who, never, uh, uh, who are never absent from religious meetings. And people think them holy, but they are impatient and they have not been sealed by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not produce impatience. These character traits will not see the kingdom of heaven. The Holy Spirit seals gentleness. Gentleness, not rough people. The Holy Spirit seals love, not racism. He doesn't seal tribalism. There are some people who, if it were in their power, only their race would be in heaven and the other races to hell. If it were in their power, only their tribe would be in heaven. Thank God heaven does not belong to them. It is for the spirit-filled who love all people and are gentle, long-suffering, and very meek, full of faith 
The question tonight is, are you sealed with the Holy Spirit? Is the Spirit of Jesus upon you? The Spirit of Sabbath keeping? The Spirit of Bible study? The Spirit of power in gospel uh, preaching? The Spirit of this, the sealing Spirit who seals the character of God in man? I want to come to an end of this presentation. Identity marks of a spirit-filled man or a spirit-filled woman. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Very interesting passage. Here's the distinction. Those who are of Christ, who have the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, they don't walk after the flesh. What are the works of the flesh? Drunkenness, adultery, murder, rioting, uh, disobedience, uncleanness, and all sorts of evil, according to Galatians 5.19. If you are spirit-filled, you, you are never named in adulterous relationships. Those are the works of the flesh. Those who are in the spirit walk after the spirit. The spirit leads to righteousness. The spirit leads to patience, to gentleness, to goodness, to kindness. He leads to holiness. But three unclean spirits, they are called unclean because when they possess people, they start doing unclean things. Are you ready for the kingdom of God in the face of all these fulfilling signs round about us? Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If any man does not have the Spirit of God, he is none of his, says Romans 8. The Holy Spirit led Jesus to the wilderness and he fasted 40 days. The Holy Spirit leads people to prayer, to fasting, to Bible study, to preaching the gospel. He leads to acts of generosity. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. Whose son are you tonight? The great question can be answered in your own heart. The Bible says here, we end on a good note. God wants everyone to be filled by the Spirit. God wants you to be filled by the Spirit. He wants your whole household to be Spirit-filled, and that's a sure sign that you are ready for the coming of Jesus. So we are in the time when you must pray for the Holy Spirit. He has a great promise for you to claim with your family. Joel 2.28 says the Lord, Joel 2.28, it shall come to pass afterward. Some Bible says it shall come to pass in the last days the days we are living, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens, in the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The Bible says in the last days, Joel spoke back then, we are in the time of the end called the last days. And God says, I want to pour my spirit upon your daughters, upon your sons, upon your fathers and mothers, that they may prophesy by the power of the spirit, that they may be transformed and be filled with the fruit of the spirit, that they may be prepared for the soon coming of Jesus. So if any man gets three unclean spirits, like frog, uh, frog like spirits in his homestead, it's not God's fault. It is your fault. The promise is for everyone that we may receive the Holy Spirit of God. We may see the visions of God, understand his word and declare his works to all the world and be transformed for that kingdom of glory. Friend, I want to make an invitation to you today. UFOs are coming and uh, unidentified flying objects masquerading demons Three unclean like uh, uh, frog-like spirits, faking the Holy Spirit. And they, they are going to deceive the whole world. But when you are filled by the Spirit of Jesus, you are safe and secure. And you are sealed for the coming of Jesus. Is it your desire tonight, this Sabbath day, that Lord, as for me and my household, I want the Spirit that was upon Jesus to fill me the spirit that was upon John on the island of Patmos to fill me, the spirit of keeping the Sabbath, the spirit of prayer, and the spirit that transforms hearts and minds for heaven. If it is the desire of your heart, you shall bow down with me where you are, 
as we invoke the Lord's presence upon you and your household. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking to us again tonight, for reminding us, Lord, about the time we are living in, signs in the religious world. There's a lot of faking uh, going on there, faking of the spirit, faking of holiness. Men are proud of holy titles, but without the right spirit. Miracles are bounding around us, Lord, in the Bible is forgotten and rubbished. I want to present men and women here tonight who are saying, Lord, thank you for your word. Fill us with the spirit of Jesus now. Transform us. Fill us with divine power to live for God at a time like this. And use us to declare the gospel with power. Help us to be generous, to support the gospel missions. Bless us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, friends, thank you for joining us and worshiping with us again on this Sabbath uh, e evening. I hope you've been blessed by the message. Please do care to share the link with your relatives and friends that they too may receive of the Holy Spirit. Our last appointment by God's grace is tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Central African time. We conclude on a high note. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Take care.